in the silence of the trophy room, where the echoes of past conquests resonate, we discover how to lead as men. It is not solely about the trophies we proudly display, but the courage to learn from defeats, humbly lead, and forge a legacy worth more than any physical accolade. Together, we'll discover how to lead from the trophy room. Hey, welcome back to Leading from the Trophy Room. This is episode six. Bo, who's the host? Who's the host? We're going to talk about that right now. So we've had some listeners kind of say, hey, you both say co-host. We love feedback, by the way. We do love feedback. And, we and we're, love not, feedback. we're not afraid of negative feedback. No, nope. negative's good. It makes us press in. It makes us think. And right before we hit record, we're sitting there talking about some of the feedback we had. And one of them was, hey, is there a host and a co-host? You guys are both saying co-host. Who's the host? I'm the host. You're the host. I'm the host. No, I'm the host. Jeremy, I think I'm so. The host. So here's here's what <laughs> Bo and I want to do. We want to accomplish this. And there'll be times that uh, I'll act as the host, and I'm really pounding Bo with questions. And then there's going to be times where you're acting as the host, and you're pounding me with questions. So yeah. uh, it's I, I don't know who you can be host today. How's that, Bo? I'll you be host today. <laughs> Hey guys, y'all figure it out. It it really doesn't matter to us. We're just a couple of guys that want to lead from the trophy room. So Bo, tell us today what we're talking about. That's right. So today we're talking about coaching our kids. Uh, that's today's titles, coaching our kids. Coaching hey, our- I'm really pumped about this. I am too. Hey, so this is one of those hats that I love to wear. And honestly, I don't really get to wear it as much as I used to. Yeah, and it's a hat I currently wear. Uh, so I'm currently the head coach of my middle child's football team. So I have two boys. I have an oldest girl, two boys. They both play football. So one's 10. He's on the fifth, sixth grade team. I'm their head coach. And my other boy's eight on the third, fourth grade team. I don't get to see him much because I am the head coach of the fifth, sixth hey, grade team. Hey, you're doing a great job, by the way. I got to see a game the other day. I'm and trying. One of the, hey, one of the, you didn't know this, but uh, I got to watch the game. This was before we gave you the job as the campus pastor. So mm. I'm seeing how your character. You're judging play, me. I'm totally judging <laughs> you. How your character plays out on the field. And man, I just want to tell you, you're the same dude on the field as you are off the field, at home, in the office. Like, thank you. Yeah. Like, more men need that. And, guys, that's what we want to talk to you about today. How do we coach up our kids? How do we – we're always going to be coaching our kids, whether it's on the field, on the court, uh, or maybe just in the truck, coaching them to the the next thing that they have. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. And I'll be honest, uh, Jeremy has some stuff for us today, and he was – he likes to kind of go over things and prepare for the podcast, which is awesome. Bo doesn't like to prepare. Anything. I don't like to prepare. I like to just wing it. People say wing it. I don't say wing it. I say speak from the heart. And so he would, <laughs> we were going through. I was like, dude. And I was starting to give like how I would just talk to you guys, how I would talk on this podcast. I'm like, hey, wait, wait, wait. Let's wait for the podcast. I want my real reaction and real questions and real input to be live right here. So, so what you're seeing is... Uh, a guy who's amazing at preparing and really good at it, and then a guy that just wants to react and and be raw with you guys. So so you, that's what you, we're gonna do. You definitely have more fun in life. Than me, <laughs> no, okay? no, I'm a little jealous. It's there. gonna be it's gonna be good. So let's let's jump right in, Jeremy. Hey, so and- let's 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 jump in. Okay, so I, I was thinking of coaching. So so here's some things that I've coached my kids in. So we start out in soccer. I hate soccer. Like <laughs> we we did the three on three, four on four soccer. We did basketball. I've done football. I've done seven on seven football. I've done stock shows. Done FFA, public speaking with the kids, debate with the kids. So yeah, like I love I I love this stuff, man. I absolutely love it. How, how about you? Like what are you coaching right now? Yeah. So right now I'm coaching football, and really, um, so I'm the head coach of my ten year olds team. Uh, I feel like I try to coach my eight year old too, even though I'm not the coach. So that's the hard part, right? Of playing like, like being a coach, but not having direct influence as the coach of your youngest son. Um, I've coached their basketball teams and I've coached their baseball teams. So, uh, and really it's just been with my middle son. So there's a little bit in me that feels bad because I haven't coached both boys yet. Uh, so, and you'll get time. Yeah. I've really walked with James well as the coach because he's the oldest boy. Uh, 
and I haven't walked as a coach with my youngest. How about Kinsey? Have you coached her in anything? I have not coached her. So Kinsey started off in soccer uh, when she was like five, you know, and uh, she kind of moved around like a new newborn deer, you know, and and realized that, oh, maybe this isn't for me. So she played one year and was done. And then she kind of took a step away from sports for a little bit and loves music and loves art and loves that. And I just try to feed into that. That's great. And coach her there. But now she uh, is in seventh grade. She made the volleyball team. And how they did the volleyball team was A, B, and C teams. Okay. So she made the B team, which I was super proud of her yeah, for. Yeah, I mean, great. You got to think. She hasn't played any sports. Right. She's now almost 13 and now trying to step into this. And then after the first week, it's called up to the A team. Oh, wow. So now she's on the A team. Yeah, and I'm loving it as a father, just being the dad, encouraging her. Uh, but I'm also trying to coach her a little bit. Too. Yeah. So, hey, we, I want to do a podcast in the future about the dad and the stands, how mm-hmm. we can be a great dad in the stands. That's good. But, uh, but hey, let's get into coaching. Okay, so, Bo, I've, I've come up with some things that I've uh, – I call them my coaching fails. That's good. Okay, so here's, here's the first one. Uh, I have failed. Uh, I failed in my past by being too focused on the game and not as focused on the kids. Like too focused in the game as in winning? Yes. Or like the development of like which, which one? Okay. So let me just give you a story. Can I give you a story? That's good. All right. So I coached Hudson's uh, Pee Wee football team. Uh, first year, I didn't coach. And a dad told me, said, Hey, if you don't coach, your son's probably not going to get to play the good positions. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're the coach, uh, I realized that he was a center his first year. His next year, he was he was quarterback, and he did really well. Our team did really well. We made it to the uh, Super Bowl. We're, we're in the Super Bowl. This is a big time. We're playing Grandview in the Super Bowl, which is fun because these boys, they did really well when they got in high school. But I saw them when they're playing little. Uh, we are... We're, we're 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 doing great. It's like back and forth. We're down by two. We're marching down the field, and I have one of the assistant coaches go, "Hey," and I'm not going to mention the kid's name. So and so's mom's down on the field. Oh my goodness! Because he hadn't gone in the game yet, and I'm like, "Holy smoke!" We had <laughs> how how did we miss putting him in the game? And now it's the key moment of the game, mm. and he need like there's only like two minutes left. Yeah. And we're down by two, and and we're marching, and man, it was such a struggle. But here's my failure. My failure is I was so focused on the game, I wasn't focused on the kids. I, I wasn't focused on who got in the game when. If I could go back, I would have a coach that would be directly responsible for making sure all the kids get to play. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of my failures. Do you wrestle with that? Yeah, I do. It's super hard. I mean, that is super hard. So right now I've got 25 players on my football team. That's a lot of players in this league. You have to play every player minimum of three plays per half. Okay. Eight minute quarters. It's hard, Jeremy. I like to win. That's a fast game. So I feel a responsibility as well, uh, to develop winners. Like, I'm does that make you. sense? Like, hey, so that, as men, we play to win. That's right. Like, you play to win the game. And uh, so I wrestle with, I struggle with the balance or the rhythm of trying to win the game um, the right way. Yeah. Like, like so it, because doing it the right way will develop winners with them all. Uh, so that, that, that's hard. I, I don't want to be okay with losing. Like the whole yes. point, of, we work hard. We work hard every week. Uh, we develop these kids, we work on these kids, we work on their skills to just go out and only care about putting them on the field. So I, what I did straight up with the parents before the year is I kind of just laid some guidelines of my heart, like how I coach and how I think through things. I said, there's a minimum play of three plays per half, but these are some other, uh, areas that I'm concerned with when it comes to playing time. And the first one was safety, like safety for the kid, uh, Half my team, I got 25. There's 13 players that are returning that have played in the past two, three, four years. And then there's 12 that are first time, never played football before. I've got to look after those 12 too. Like, yeah, yeah, I want to give them playing time, but also I don't want to get them killed, Mm -hmm. get their head taken off out Yeah, this is fifth and sixth graders. That's right. right, That's right. So some of the sixth graders are like bigger than me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're big boys. And so you get some kids out there that don't know what they're doing and then they get blindsided and taken out. And now the kid's hurt because you put them on the field when he wasn't ready. So I'm trying to just 
Paint that picture so, for the parents. So I think the key here, Bo, is just to make sure that we really are focusing on the kids yeah. and uh, not um, not just trying to win the game. All right, yeah, so here, here's, here's your Bible verse. Uh, do nothing out of uh, selfish ambition mm. or vain conceit, all right? But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. That's, That's Philippians 2. So I, I think a lot of times in sports, we can become very, very selfish. And I, I think it's 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 a good reminder. Hey, nothing, even coaching, yeah. out of selfishness. Hey, yeah. here's another failure. Can I go to another yeah, failure? Another one. Uh, I did not realize how loud my voice was. Okay, as a coach, did you scream a lot as a coach? So, so listen, as a coach and as a dad, here's the deal: uh, the more authority you have, the louder your voice is, no matter if you're yelling or not. That's good. So, as head coach. Uh, I would yell to motivate, mm -hmm. but yelling to motivate, uh, it would come across, I think, looking back, I wish I had video myself, uh, it would sound derogatory, it would sound negative to the kids, when honestly, I didn't have to do that. Mm. Uh, and, and I To see, get your point across. To get my point across. Now, that same thing happens as a dad. Whether I'm coaching my kids in anything, if I raise my voice, yeah. it is amplified 10 times, probably even 10 times more than mom's, uh, just by raising my voice because of the authority that I have as a dad. So the more authority you have, like the less you need to raise your voice. Yeah. There are some times to raise your voice, but those times are few and far between. Yeah, I would say if most men listen to this and me, um, we do it in the house too. Like, yeah. like we raise our voice to be heard, but what they're hearing, I think, um, what you're trying to get across doesn't come across because you're yelling so loud. Yes. Like, so your heart's desire and what you're really trying to communicate, all they're hearing is someone yelling and what you intended at first isn't coming across because of the level of your voice. So like, like you said, just speak be, from your authority. Like yes. as a leader of your house, you just speak and they'll listen. You don't need to yell. That's exactly you know, right. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, that's exactly. I, I think it's you have to be even more sensitive with uh, your daughters hmm. uh, because they need to see dad as safe. They need to see dad as for them. And when we raise our voices to our daughters, uh, number one, it's it's communicating we're not safe. But also, Bo, what we're doing, we're setting the example. That's what they're going to look for in a man. Yeah. And uh, so – so anyway, that's 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 number two. That's good. Uh, so all right, here's my third one. Uh, I corrected on the way home. Okay, so like, <laughs> come as, on, don't tell me this. I do this as every soon weekend. as we get in the car. Hey, son, do you realize you did this, this, Those this, are and the this best wrong? Teaching moment. No, they're not, Bo. He already knows it. She already knows it. They know where they failed, probably even more so than you do. Mm. And uh, I had I had somebody is actually a close brother, Mike Williams. Uh, he he shared with me. He said, "Hey, especially the older your kids get, uh, you be their champion and you celebrate with them the things they did." And and the day of is not the day to correct. Gosh, Jeremy, you're hitting. All, can I tell you a story real sure, fast? Sure, sure. This is last Saturday, not not a few days ago. You confessing your sins. I'm. I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I think I'm just, hey, right I'm now, tell you a story. Right now I'm the host. Okay. okay? All right. <laughs> I uh I, so our team plays at 8 a.m. every every Saturday. My son plays at 9 45. My youngest son, okay. Hudson. Okay. So our game gets done at the field we're at, uh, about 9 15, 9 30. Me and my son jump in the truck. We run all the way across town to the location my other son's at, starting at 9 45. Get in the stands. I get through just after halftime and I leave. What? I was so frustrated. What are you doing? Listen, I'm confessing right now. I want to talk through this. I And I think a lot of dads will relate to me because being a coach, you hear from parents. Okay? You left the game. See, listen. <laughs> yes, I left the game. I said, son, get in the truck. We got to go. I can't watch any more of this. My son, it's a football game, li Bo. Listen to me. Pee wee. Hey. Sorry. Okay, right. keep going. Ears need to be bigger. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we, he wasn't running. He was like missing tackles. I'm just being honest right now, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Like he was not the player I know he could be. Sure. And when you're, I'm relating with some men right now. I know when you're sitting in the stands, uh, I'm have no longer have authority on the field in that moment. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the parent that walks down on the field. Like the mom, you said, I'm not going to go stand there, even though I do have a badge because I am a coach. So officially I could be on the sideline. Sure. I'm not going to do that. And so instead of yelling or saying something from the stands, I decided just to walk away, <laughs> but I was so frustrated. And so in that, like that same day, my, my daughter had a volleyball game. So they got home. We, we really went home to shower and get ready. So when they got home, it was quicker to turn around to get to my daughter's volleyball game. But the whole way to my daughter's volleyball tournament, I was coaching him. Mm. Yeah. You know, and try in, in my mind, in my skewed mind, I guess, and listening to you, I feel like I'm encouraging him. Like I'm trying to encourage him for next game to go harder, to run. Hey, I saw you, even though the play's happening on the other side of the field, you're jogging across the field. That's not what we do. Like you fly all over the field, you run in, while the ball's still in play. So like in my mind, I'm encouraging, but I could see that it could be like all dad's doing is coaching me and telling me all I did was wrong. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, so... Bo, there are days, all right, I've, I've been watching you at work. There are days that you don't perform as well as other days. Yep. Okay. Normally, when you're not performing well, there's something going on in your life. Yeah. Am I, am I right? Yeah. If I'm guessing, if your son, you've seen his character over time, he's a performer. Yeah. So if he's not performing, if I'm guessing, there's probably something going on. So what if dads, what if we viewed our kids that way, like when they're not performing well, when they're not living up to expectations, instead of like badgering them, hey, you should have done, you should have done. It's like, I call it, we should, we should all over them. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you you say, should, 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 we all should over all them. over them. Okay. Uh, instead of shouldn't all over them, like what if we really did get, try to seek what's going on. Get to know them. Yeah. Get to know them. That's good. So, so I, yeah, there, it, there are times to coach, Yeah, but it's not, especially the negative stuff, the hard stuff. It's not the day of, cause they're already down. They're already beat up from the game. That's good. So, so one of the advice I was asking my son Hudson about, Hey, what, what do you feel like we did well when we did this thing together? And he said, dad, you were always with me. I knew you were always with me. We were going to celebrate together and we were going to lose together. Mm. And, uh, so, so my son, uh, Hudson, he's had some, um, he's had some really good moments and some really hard moments. Hudson was a stud at Glen Rose high school as the quarterback. Yep. He uh, he was he, Mahomes times ten in high school. <laughs> it was uh, it was fun to it be fun. his. It was fun to be his dad. But you know, like his his last play he ever played, uh, he I was there. He fumbled the ball in the state semi final game. Yeah, and like we were gonna we were gonna score, but you know what? Like the first person he texts when that game was over was me mm. and Sharon. Because we were sharing that loss together. It makes me want to cry right yeah, now. Yeah, for sure. Because, and, and he told me, he said, Dad, uh, because I knew you were always with me, he said it grew us closer together because we could celebrate the wins and we mourn the losses together. Mm, so Super cool. One of my favorite things to do with him was uh, when he got uh, in high school was to watch the rewatch the game. And we did this in Pee Wee too. You probably, do y'all film the games? Yes. And yes. we would re-watch re the game, and uh, but we would watch it as spectators and laugh because there would be moments of the game that he does something bonehead. He's like, look, Dad, I should have passed it here, but I did here. <laughs> That's good. Or this this guy ran into me or, you know, there's things to laugh at. like mm. like make it, it. But then there are also things to celebrate, and I still have plays on my phone that I'm like, hey, this is the best play you ever made in your life right here, son. And uh, so I really am crying, dude. This is like That's emotional good. for me. But but those were, it, it's like you're in it together. You yeah. never want to position yourself as a dad and as a coach against your child. Mm. You want them to know you're always with them. And, th and this is one other thing Hudson said. You're always a dad. Okay, I've, I've heard dad say, hey, I'm not a dad right now. I'm a coach. I'm wearing the coach hat. I'm wearing a coach hat. Hey, you've all your coach hat goes on top of your dad hat. You never take your dad hat off. 
It's really you, good. Your kids don't understand that. They can't, they cannot comprehend that. You're my dad. You're my dad. You're always my dad. So just know that, dad. You can't, you can't, they cannot separate you being a dad from a coach. So, so just, just receive that. Just know that. And, uh, because they're, they're evaluating. Yeah, that's evaluating. good. Hey, I want to back up real fast when you yeah. said, um, about Hudson, my Hudson. That's yeah. funny. Both our sons are Hudson, but mm. my my Hudson, when he was struggling last week, I was getting frustrated that um, there might be something deeper affecting him, or there might be something going on. Like, figure yeah. that out and see if that's there. <clears throat> I want to relate that to life. Uh, I know as a parent and as parents, me and my wife, we'll get frustrated with our kids sometimes inside the house. Yes. Hey, they're acting out of character. Hey, they're doing these things. Uh, and it's causing tension and frustrations inside the house. Uh, the same thing applies. Like yeah. it's not that they don't know, or it's not that they're, there's a reason they're acting out or being different. And so I want to encourage the men listening. Like, it, yes, it pertains on the field too, but also in the house as a father, like a good way to love your kids and where they're at now is to sit down with them and talk to them about life and talk to them about school and go through things and, uh, over time of doing that, you'll kind of hear the things that they're maybe wrestling with right now and there's something going on. And that's what you press into as yeah, a father. So dads always get upset when their kid's behavior doesn't match what they've seen for years. Mm -hmm. Maybe their kid stole something or their kid did something crazy. And they're like, I can't believe they did that. Well, the truth is the only reason they did that is there's some kind of root issue. There's some kind of lie that they're believing. There's something that they're wrestling with in life that caused them to act out of character. So dads, that, that should be like a red flag and yeah. alert to say, hey, check yeah, sit Check down, what's going take on. time. And then wait, one more. I've got two more questions. One other right, answer to right. In that moment, so the moment he's talking about with his Hudson and the fumble, yeah, it was a big scene. Like they're at the Cowboys practice facility in, up there in the Frisco. The star in Frisco, yeah. Yeah, huge inside facility. It was going nuts. It was packed, rocking. It was so fun to be at. It was an incredible game. Yeah, it was and incredible. It, it was an incredible game. Uh, so it was a like I I felt I mean I think everybody in the stands that was going for Glen Rose felt it. Uh, what'd you do as a father in that moment? Like so so it happened in the moment and like that night. Did did you send yeah. a text? Did you talk to it? Like what? So so in the moment, Bo, uh, it's probably it's probably the moment that I've been so most proud of my son in his whole entire life. Mm. Uh, so. So you can see the true character of a man. It doesn't come after the victory. It comes after the loss. So I don't know if you remember that game. I do remember. Can I butt in? Because I, I want it to come from me if someone <laughs> – we haven't talked about this. I no, think no, we weren't even supposed to talk about we this. We weren't supposed to talk about this. I think what he's about to go into, what I saw. Yeah. So I want to I speak from what I saw because we were not sent by each other. Uh, that happened. They lose the game. It's over. They're defeated. They're half their team, Glen Rose, on the ground crying. You have seniors with their their heads in their hands. You have people walking away. And you have the other team going nuts and celebrating. Hudson gets off the ground, and he goes to that team by himself, and he's sitting there congratulating the other team, shaking their hands and telling them good game. Like it was just incredible to witness the leadership that he had in that moment. Yeah. So that's what, uh, so the next day on social media, that's all anybody talked about. They talked about how hard Glenn Rose played against Carthage. And they talked about, Hey, did y'all see that quarterback after the game? Did you see number 13 after the game? And it's like, I was so, I was so proud of my son, even though there was a loss that took place. So those were the things we talked about the next mm. day. Yeah, we talked about the fumble. Yeah, we we cried about the fumble. Yeah, we the the next week when that team beat the the other team in the state championship by millions of points, mm -hmm. it seemed like we it hurt a little bit, mm -hmm. but but we tried to laugh it off and hug it off. And mm -hmm. and even to this day, like that's a moment when it comes up. Like we're we're moving closer to each other, yeah. Because that even that loss brought us closer together than maybe maybe the win. Yeah, it's good. I, being a coach and having to deal with parents, like I want to like dads remember that. Like remember 
that the game is bigger than the game. Yes. And like, I don't care if it's sports or whatever your kids are in or whatever is happening in life. Like moments like that is way bigger than football. Like he's going to fumble the ball in life. We all fumble the ball in life. I mean, I'm fumbling the ball constantly in my marriage and in stuff I walk through. And if you learn at that age to press into and learn how to deal with it and overcome it, and then encourage people in the middle yes, of it. Yes. Like it carries over to life. And so just remember that as parents of like, that's what we're speaking into kids, not their ability or winning or losing. It's moments like that and getting through them because it plays out all throughout life. Uh, the other thing, I know that you used to do something with your son on Friday mornings uh, before each game. I think, it, did you used to text him encouragement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about that. That's just I, a tool. I totally so they, forgot about this. Yeah, I know yeah. you did. Yeah. And it's not on your notes. But it's not on my notes. This is a tool that encouraged me to be more intentional with my kids. Yeah. So when Hudson made varsity uh, for three years, I would always text him a uh, a man truth. So it would be something about manhood, like a, a real man is courageous. And then I would speak how I've seen him be courageous. And then I would speak... Uh, and, and text on how he needs to be courageous tonight as he plays and as he leads his team. And so it's a man truth. It's affirming in his life. And then it's a, uh, how, how we need to see it out on the field. And, uh, yeah, that, those are special. Misty actually took all the text and made a book out of it and, oh, and put them that. with the uh, pictures from the game. And, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's pretty cool. That's, yeah, it's awesome. And what I can picture is your son, let's say he's on the bus yeah. traveling to go to a game. And there could be nerves. There could be lies that start creeping up in his head that he starts believing. Uh, there could be, hey, are we going to win this game because of my abilities and all this stuff? And here he is sitting on the bus, and he gets to look down on his phone and read this huge text that his father, his dad, wrote to him yeah. saying, no, this is who you are. This is what I've seen in you. Uh, go win from this. Like not from anything else. It's just that's super cool. Well, anyway. it was a, it was a special moment. Hey, yeah. I know we need to wrap this up. Yeah, uh, I've got a few tips. These are actually uh, from Hudson and I. We we were talking about. Uh, hey, what what are some tips for dads? All right, so here it is. Uh, celebrate the wins and losses together. Okay, uh, and I would say almost celebrate the losses more. Yes. Like speak into the losses and how proud you are and what you saw in those losses. So the reason why that's important is we want to reaffirm our, to our kids, your love is not based on their performance. That's right. If they win. Of just winning. If they win, you love them. If they lose, you love them. You're their biggest cheerleader. Uh, incorporate God in everything. Uh, if you're coaching them, talk about God out there on the field. Uh, pray before the game. Have a kid pray before the game. Uh, use stories. Uh, I mean, there are some great stories in the Old Testament to motivate them. Mm-hmm. Uh, David and Goliath, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Ehud, the left-handed hero. I mean, there's some great ones. So incorporate God. And so an easy way to do that is just say, hey, I know you wear a jersey with your school on the front and your name on the back, but you also wear another jersey and it's Jesus Christ. And that's who we say we follow. So everything you do represents what you believe in him. And so that's just an easy win for you. If you're saying, Hey, how do I incorporate like in saying that? And then you speak in what that looks like. So when they do lose, you still carry yourself as though the greater is Jesus Christ. Like I follow Jesus Christ and this is what that looks like. And so that's that's an easy way to, yeah, we're playing to win and we're playing for God's glory. That's right. We want to honor God today. Uh, Here's a here's a funny one. Uh, take a ball with you everywhere you go. It's a good one. So whether we're we're going on vacation, whether we always had a ball in the truck, we always had a ball in the suitcase, and we're just playing. We're throwing. We're uh, we're reliving uh, the the plays in the game. So so always take a ball. Hey, so that does two things. That uh, redevelops skill. So it'll it'll help with their athleticism. But it also gives you something to do with your kids. So there's a ball in my office. And so on church on Sundays, my kids are down here. And sometimes they don't know what to do. They have to be here all day. They get to go grab the football and throw it in the hallway. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Hudson always uh, also said this. Don't take it easy on your kids when you play them one-on-one. Now, this is different than a lot of parenting would say. I love this one. Here's why. is because eventually they're going to beat you. He and I have been texting all day today. 
I think I can beat him in something. I just hadn't figured out what it is Hudson yet. Hudson will kick your butt he, in football. So I rem- he beat me in basketball one-on-one when he was like a eighth grader or ninth grader, and I can't beat him. I can beat him in pig or horse, <laughs> but but real one-on-one. Athleticism. And he said, he said, Dad, the, the day I beat you, it meant so much to me because I knew I earned it. Yeah. And your kids need like that's a passage in the manhood that's right good. there. It is, yeah. You know, so uh, also, uh, uh, oh, here's here's a funny one. Uh, buy a weight bench and put it a what a weight bench a weight bench and put it in your house. <laughs> All right. So the bet that is the best thing that that I ever did. I have a weight bench. Okay, put but it, I can't wait to. Is hear it this. outside or inside? No, your it's house? inside. It's in our bedroom. Okay, so. Uh, when he was in sixth grade, we bought a weight bench. Uh, we we kept it outside. Nobody used it outside. We moved it in the house. And yes, it's obtrusive. Yes, it's ugly. Yes, all the things your wife's going to say. She is correct. But here's what happened. Uh, we started working out together. And then COVID happened. And he worked out a whole lot. And he put on muscles and weight. And then here's the other thing that happened. When all of his buddies come over the house, you know the first place they go? The weight bench. They go lift weights. How much can you bench? How much? Uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But it's like a fun thing to do. But it also builds it, it build it builds it into them. So yeah, it's good. I don't know. I've I've got some more here. We need to cut it off. But this is just a fun topic. I love I love to talk about. It is this. fun. It's being it's being an intentional dad. Yeah, like in all you do. And so if you're sitting here going, I don't coach my son's team. You do like. You are your son's coach in life. like, And I guarantee you, you're speaking into what you're seeing him do on the field. Uh, so he's hearing you as a coach and as a father. But I think the biggest thing is always remember your dad hat is always on. Yeah. Uh, don't take You don't take one hat off and then put on another. Your dad hat's always on. Always be that father. Always be encouraging. Always know the greater picture and not in the moment of just winning or losing. Yeah, and almost everything we talked about today also applies to our daughters as well. Uh, I've coached my daughter in a lot of things. Jenna was actually scrappier and meaner than Hudson. <laughs> Whenever she played basketball, she would throw elbows and she would uh, go crazy. I would say the biggest thing in relating to our daughters, just remember that tone, that voice. That's good. Make it safe, dads. Make it safe. Even out on the court, you make it safe as, as dad and also as coach. All right, guys. Hey, we'll see you next time. Go be a coach in life to your kids. You were a great host today. You're a great host. host.